Takeo Spikes quickly rose the ranks of the NFL with hard work and dedication. He has stayed in the spotlight after life as a linebacker with his entertaining play-by-play -play work, brand partnerships. He also went back to school for his MBA. Spikes even turned his passion for photography into a business. And like his time on the field, he's always on the move. I want to start from the beginning with you. Um, wh when did you know that, that football was going to be your path? <sighs> to be honest with you, I've always wanted to play the game of football since I've been introduced to it at the age of seven years old. And um, my father, he was, you know, my Pop Warner League coach. He was one of the coaches. And so it was, that was my first introduction. And at that time, I fell in love with the game. <laughs> you know, that was, that was my first love. And so I can truly say this, people ask me, how is it to play, it, play the game? I tell them it was the childhood dream that came true because it was something that I always wanted to do. You have the motto of chasing greatness. Those yeah. are the words that you live by. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, it's, it's every morning when I, when I played the game, every morning when I woke up, it was how can I get better? Or if I had a great day from the previous day, it was, okay, can I do it again? Or if it was two days, it turned into, okay, can you make two turn into five days, which is a week? And so it was, it was always competitive fire within inside of myself that I was always chasing greatness. And uh, ultimately that led me to create uh, my labor of love behind the mask, uh, my book. And uh, it's a photography coffee table book comprised of uh, 13 different linebackers, some of the greatest that ever played the game, and I'm sharing their story of how did they become great, you know, what made them that outlier. And so uh, it took me two years to complete, and I think the cool thing about the project was I had an opportunity to spend a day with every guy and get their, most, their innermost thoughts on what made them tick. You know, and so for me, when we talk about greatness, like, that's part of me waking up chasing greatness because I wanted to know your why. Photography, football, they seem like different crafts. Yeah. But, but are there parallels? I mean, are there similarities in both that bring together both of those passions for Ab you? Absolutely, it's a lot of parallels, just the preparation. And when you look at the preparation of getting ready to play a game, it's not so much about what you do, it's understanding what your opponent is doing and what they like to, what they like to present in certain situations. It's no different than photography. You have to study, you have to understand what do you want to be portrayed. After you understand that, understand who you're dealing with as far as what do they like, what, do, what they don't like, because you want everything to be displayed or, 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 or come out in that portraiture the way that you want it to be. When we see someone have the kind of success that you've had on the field, uh, a lot of people talk about transitions. You've talked yeah. a lot about transitions and, and, and yours has seemed quite successful, but take us behind the scenes of, of making that transition from performing on the field to, to this world that you live in now, doing so many different innovative things. Yeah, it's a, um, that's a very good question. Uh, the transition is hard. Uh, I mentioned to you earlier, I've been playing organized football since I was at the age of seven. So 29 years out of my life, that's what I've been doing. And so for, for me, what I did realize is when I retired, I know, or I knew I needed that structure. Every day, pop, 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 pop with the timing. Seven, eight to 10 to 12, break, two, three. And so uh, that's how I created the concept with Behind the Mask and it keeps me busy mentally. But then other things from a business perspective too, I do real estate, uh, commercial real estate in Atlanta. Uh, me and a few of my friends got together and came up with our own small private equity group. And uh, that's what we do. We go around and do multi-tenant retail. And so those things keep me active. Uh, they keep me busy. I get frustrated sometimes, but it's part of the process. And it's a lot better being able to do this and leverage your relationships with people who you know and people who want to get to know you, uh, that it comes out as a big win. And you could explore a lot of opportunities without doing something like business school, but you wanted to do an executive MBA. Yeah. Talk, talk a little bit about that process. Uh, that was strong. See, when I left Auburn, I left as a junior, so I had one more year to complete. 
Uh, after that, I left, I graduated when I retired. And so I was talking with my mother and I was like, you know what, I wanna learn more. I wanna know, I wanna understand because I felt like I was in the biggest industry, one of the biggest industries of all time with the NFL as far as how they make their money. And so I knew internally on some things because I was just involved. I love how the monster works. And so that's the reason why I went back to school and got my MBA from the University of Miami. And, um, and that really opened my eyes to a lot of things. And everything I do now is I think, how can I be more strate strategic? Um, how can I be more intentional? And make sure you learn the economics of everything that you're involved with. Those are the biggest lessons that I learned from getting my MBA. Were there seeds being planted uh, when you weren't on the field? I mean, everybody sees you on the field. They don't see you when you're off the field, but right. it's a tough business. Literally, you can get banged up, you get injured. So during your playing days, were you, were you starting to think about yeah. that next step? I did, and you don't know. Like a lot of guys, everybody who makes it to the NFL, that is, for the most part, is probably 90% is their childhood dream. What I did to prepare I understood, I knew football wasn't gonna last forever, and I, was, I wasn't okay with that, so I wanted to make sure I, I'm able to sustain my lifestyle. So uh, the NFL did a great job, and the Players Association, as far as bringing in executive education classes at Harvard, Stanford, Wharton, uh, and I, I, I did all of those schools. And so that is what really kinda got my palate wet as far as like, okay, I like the way this tastes and I wanna know more. And so just from the executive education classes that I took, uh, it, it, it served me tremendously. So from real estate, photography, broadcasting, we get a sense that there's a lot of different places where you can go. When you think about things you haven't done or business opportunities that maybe might be things you'd like to pursue longer term, is there anything we don't know about you yet? I like chick flicks. That's more on the sensitive side. Don't use it against me. But uh, no, I, I, I think the biggest thing is I'm always trying to find an edge. I'm always trying to win. I'm trying to find a way to, to, to continue my lifestyle and, 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 and to set my kids up as far as having them to get that opportunity that a lot of us don't get.